It's Karen at the Cool Tool Studio, and I'm here today for a really quick video to offer some explanation on Phoenix's firing guide for co-firing Phoenix with glass, and what it looks like to fire glass in a kiln following those schedules. There are two firing schedules available to you, and I made some samples here to demonstrate the difference between them. There is one firing schedule where you go up to 1,300 degrees and hold for 15 minutes. And this is the firing schedule you use when you want your glass cabochon to remain unchanged. It's still perfectly round, and at this point, the glass hasn't gotten up to a high enough temperature that it's going to fuse to your fine silver. So for this kind of setting, you want to make sure that your glass is kind of trapped and set it similar to the way that you would like a fireable CZ or nano gem. And the second option is where you're going to be fusing the glass to the silver. I kind of angle this here, you can see, unlike this one where there's like a little bit of space between the glass and the silver, the glass actually relaxed and kind of slumped into and fused to the fine silver there. Uh, you can also see that on the back. For this piece, the glass um, ended up kind of sinking down into this hole back here. On this piece, because the glass cabochon was unchanged, it's kind of resting on top of the glass there some, or it's resting on top of the metal there some, and it's not coming down through. So the firing schedule where you want your glass to fuse to your silver is a full ramp up to 1,450 degrees and holding it for 30 minutes. If you're using this firing schedule, you need to crash cool it. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like with a kiln. When you're co-firing glass with metal clay, you want to remove the vent plug from your kiln. This is going to reduce the chance that you're going to get fuming or a kind of hazy look on your glass cabochons once they're fired. So to demonstrate how to do the crash cooling method, when you fired your pieces to 1450 degrees and your firing has been held for 30 minutes and completed, you're going to want to crash cool your kiln. So to do that, you open the kiln door about two inches or so, and then you're going to watch the temperature reading until it goes down to 1100 degrees. So again, I'm just watching those numbers, waiting for it to go down to 1,100 degrees. And this just kind of stops the, the glass from continuing to change, it kind of halts it by bringing it back down to 1,100 degrees where it's going to be stable. We're getting close. All right, and at this point, you're going to shut the door and leave it closed and kind of keep an eye on it as it rises again. And when it stops rising, when it kind of looks like, okay, we're sitting at this temperature, then you're going to open the door again and allow it to fall down to 1,100 degrees again. And you're going to keep repeating that until your kiln stays around 1,100 degrees and then do not open it again. So at this point, my kiln's still going up a little bit. So it looks like I will have to repeat this process maybe. But I'm going to kind of wait for it to seem as though, okay, we're staying at this temperature before I open the door again. All right, it looks like we're sitting here for a bit. So I'm going to open my door again and let it drop back down to 1,100 degrees. And we'll let it rest and see if it gets back up above that temperature again. And if it doesn't, then you just leave it sit and do not disturb your kiln until the temperature is below 200 degrees. And again, this is only for um, pieces that you have brought up to 1,450 degrees. If you did the unchanged firing method where you fired to 1,300 degrees and held for 15 minutes, you just leave the door shut. You don't have to bother with any of this. At this point, it looks like I'm not going to go back up over 1,100 degrees, so I'm done. If you're introducing glass to your metal clay practice, another thing to keep in mind that's a little bit different from when you're just firing metal clay is that you need to use ceramic fiber paper underneath your glass. And it says this side down lets you know which side goes down against the shelf. And then if you're firing a lot of pieces, you can just put the paper directly on your shelf and kind of line things up. But say you're just going to be firing this one piece, you can cut the paper to size and it doesn't have to cover the whole 
um, metal part. It just has to be behind the glass. But for a piece like this, there's not a ton of metal overhang anyways. So you can just cut your glass, or your paper to size rather. And you wanna make sure that it is behind the glass. So something like that's perfect. If this piece was really big, you would just wanna make sure that the glass was on top of paper, like if the metal extended over this way really far, that's fine. You just wanna make sure that the glass itself is not resting on your kiln shelf and instead is resting on some ceramic fiber paper. Once you've fired your pieces with dichroic glass, they can be tumbled with stainless steel shot and you can finish them much like you would your other metal clay pieces. Uh, you'd want to avoid hitting them with an abrasive, like a, um, you know, a 120 grit radial disc. You wouldn't want to get that close to your glass because you could scratch it, but kind of just like a CZ in that way. Uh, you can finish the metal around it and tumble these pieces just like you would any other piece with metal clay. I hope this video clarified Phoenix's firing instructions for co-firing with glass, so you can introduce glass to your metal clay practice with confidence. Thanks for watching.